Are you excited today? I'm excited. Do you know why you're excited? No. Mm -hmm. Cool. Today is Commissioning Watermaker Day, which is why I'm really excited, and I just appreciate the fact that she's excited for me. Now that everything is plumbed in and wired in, let's do a very quick overview because I want to commission this thing. That's what I'm most excited about. So we'll jump down here in this corner. We've got the two blue hoses. One of those is seawater intake. The other one is pressurized fresh water going down to the pump in the bilge. This hose over there, that is the brine discharge. We've got two of the pickling uh, discharge hoses as well. This valve up here, this is selecting uh, brine overboard and then pickling. So right now, brine overboard. We've got the Zen 100 water maker itself. Sorry, a lot of harsh shadows in here today. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about this when we do the commissioning. Up here, this is kind of the, the fresh water center of the whole system. So pressurized fresh water pump. This will be supplying the uh, fresh water for rinsing out the system, if you will. Uh, production water comes up here. Choose this one. If it's pickling, goes that way. Production goes up to the TDS probe. TDS probe over to this 12-volt solenoid valve. If the water is good quality, goes blue side into the tank. Bad quality, red side. Normally it would go overboard right now, plumbed in so that I can do some testing for commissioning. Then, yep, I think that's all that. Over here, we've got white one is carbon filter housing. We've got the electro valve, so this is controlled by the controller inside, opens up the pressurized fresh water for flushing the whole system. Uh, Orange cartridge is the 5 micron filter, and this is the accumulator. There we go. Good system overview. Uh, let's go inside and start checking all the valves, get everything commissioned. First step we've got to do is make sure all the plumbing uh, opens up, no leaks and stuff like that. Let's start down here, first and foremost, through hole valve opening. Ooh, we see a little bit of water coming in. Not a whole lot, because there's a bunch of airlock in the system, that's for sure. We're gonna go ahead and open this stopper valve next. And we're getting a little more water coming up. But no leak so far. It will be important to make sure that the fresh water pump and water maker actually have power. So turn on the breakers for both of them. I haven't actually opened the the contactor relay for it yet. Uh, that'll be the 12 volt switch at the panel, but gotta make sure the breakers are open to start. Back down at the water maker itself, got a couple things to check on here. We need to make sure this is called the reset valve. That needs to be closed. That is definitely closed. Over here, uh, this is called the positioner. That needs to be all the way open. That is open. And we have up on top here, this is called the depressurization valve. That also needs to be completely open. Well, that's, that's definitely open uh, for the startup. And one last thing. Oh, back over here. Make sure the valve for the freshwater carbon filter is open. I think we're good. Time to actually start it up. Quick note, I was just doing a little bit of research. This should not be open all the way, depressurization valve, but just a few turns. Uh, don't want things flying out of there. All right, I think it's time to try turning it on. I'm gonna go ahead and give power to everything. Let's see what happens. Something didn't quite sound right. Let's go take a look. I think we're getting an airlock in the freshwater supply hose. Uh, not a big surprise given everything was taken apart, so uh, I'm gonna have to find a way to bleed the line. I released the airlock using the carbon filter. Maybe not the best study in the world, cause yeah, we, we made a bit of a mess, but freshwater pump's now working. All right, babe, let's give it a try. We are trying to give our flush 
a go. That sounds weird. All right, let's give it a try. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Ooh, disco. You should be doing this for about three minutes. And I'll be back. It's making lots of noises, but hopefully that's a good thing. <laughs> water to do this procedure. And I can see some water coming in here. Here a little bit of air coming out up here. And you can Ooh, yeah. This is nice. I can see kind of the water going through all the hoses. I'm not seeing any leaks. Off to a good start. I'm check for leaks down here as well. A little tough to see. I think we're good. All right, that first test I think went pretty well. No leaks anywhere, very pleased with that. Uh, now we actually have to start up the unit itself and kind of see if it'll actually make some fresh water. The three minutes has passed. So now I'm going to Press the on off button and David will pressurize the system. All right, the unit is starting up again. We'll let it run for just a minute, leaving the last little bit of air out. And I think we'll go ahead and start closing this pressurization valve and it should start to build up some pressure. Slowly, slowly. Ooh, seeing some water. It's making water for the first time. What's the reading? So I was making water. Uh, right now I've got it coming out of the, the TDS is too high, so the valve is diverting it this way. That's a good sign. Amy is telling me the TDS readings is definitely going down. You can hear this thump, and that is uh, the piston kind of going back and forth. Um, it pressurizes the system. Still a little under pressurized. What's it? The TDS reading now? All right, something's not right. Wish I could report this. Uh, first fire up has gone flawlessly, but got a little troubleshooting to do. Uh, looks like I've got really small leaks coming out of both of these um, elbows for the filters. So I'm going to take those apart and try that again, I guess. And then also the 12 volt solenoid diverter valve isn't diverting properly. Uh, it kept everything going um, to the high TDS reading side of the line. So I gotta figure out why that's not working. I have attempted these connections again. I did some more Teflon tape. We did some uh, pipe dope and hopefully that's gonna be good for this. The pipe dope I used is potable water um, rated. So no worries on that front. I have attempted something on the 12 volt uh, solenoid wiring, moved the ground to a different place. Maybe that'll work, uh, but I'm guessing we'll probably have to do some more troubleshooting on that. But for now, let's do startup attempt number two. I'll make sure to remember to open the uh, pressurization valve a few turns. 
All right, babe, go ahead. You can definitely hear it kind of bleeding out all the air and stuff in here. You can hear water moving through all the pipes. No leaks to start, which is a good sign, but we'll need to test it under pressure. Start procedure is done. I have now closed the pressurization valve. Uh, let's go ahead and try starting up again. All right, babe, on off button. Well, we've got water coming out of the discharge hose, I think. Pressure is not showing that it's increasing still. TDS reading is still pretty high, given it's just starting up again, so it should be coming out of here. Hopefully it is dropping. Uh, hopefully that will divert thanks to that thing. Our TDS reading is about 50 inside, which means that it should not be coming out of there anymore. Um, something is still not quite right with that solenoid valve. So I'm gonna divert the water over to here. Um, I'm also not seeing pressure uh, from the pressure gauge. So I wanna see how much water it's actually producing and if it's producing the rated amount, then I guess that valve or sensor might be broken. So uh, we're gonna do some testing. I've now captured one minute's worth of production into that bucket. Still coming out uh, technically the discharge hose. So let's measure this and at least see how much water we're producing. In some good news at least, no leak and no leak. Now I just gotta figure out why it's not diverting properly. Based on the water produced, the unit was outputting perfectly at 100 liters per hour. More troubleshooting had to wait, as some weather was rolling in, and I had to do something I'd never done before. That's a sail out behind me, which means we're actually on the move. I can't even believe it. It feels like it's been so long since Star Horizons has been moving anywhere. Uh, and the craziest part about this, I'm here by myself, single-handing Starry Horizons, which I don't believe I've ever actually done before. I've always at least had some friends with me. So this is a little bit interesting. Unfortunately, we needed to move because there's some bad weather heading our way. And the only place that Safe Harbor any B had for us was at the end of a T head that would have been getting bashed straight on the dock because it was open to the entrance. Not great. So there's a Safe Harbor in Greenwich Bay. Uh, that's where we're headed. Should be a little bit more protected, hopefully. And biggest question is, am I gonna be able to get Star Horizons to the dock all by myself? I've got fenders and lines already set up down the boat. So when I get in the river, I can just kind of toss them over and be ready to toss lines or maybe even have them just grab the lines from the boat. Happy to report, I made it on the dock. Star Horizons is here. Uh, it, was, it was a very tight, narrow entrance. A couple interesting corners to navigate. Uh, definitely tough with blind spot without anyone else on the boat kind of telling me where to go. We got in and now we can relax. Uh, definitely this is a, a much better spot for the weather that's coming. And we can wrap up the projects we need to, so feels good. What are you working on there, babe? Well, this is the, the next round of troubleshooting. So uh, what's happening is the water is coming out backwards. So if the TDS reading is too high, it's going to the tank. And if the TDS reading is production water, it's going out the overboard flow. So, Oops. Yeah, kind of, kind of a problem. Um, so I, I think 
there, there's two options. So there's like settings in here that I can adjust to tell it when to close the solenoid valve. So I'm attempting to try to mess with some of those settings. And then there's also a wiring possibility that I might swap uh, which side the wiring to the relay goes. Uh, so we gotta test both those things. Um, we're gonna start with the easiest one and that's playing with the, the, the settings inside the controller. I think I had the relay programming swapped. So just change that around. Let's try this one more time and hope that I've got everything programmed correctly. What is it at now? Still. Okay, hit the on off. We did a bit more troubleshooting, trying different programming configurations, but in the end, it was the wiring that needed to be changed. Moving the positive wire from the relay high to the relay low meant I could correctly program the controller to open the relay for any TDS reading below 500. It took a little bit of experimenting and some troubleshooting, but we've got it working properly now. So. The TDS controller inside needed a little bit of uh, settings adjustments, but now if the TDS readings are too high, the water comes out this red line, goes overboard. If it's nice clean drinking water, blue line to the tanks. So that feels really good, and I think I'm ready to call this project done. So it, it, a lot of moving parts, but a huge thanks to Rich and Charlie at Cruz RO. They were fantastic about answering questions and troubleshooting for me. So uh, huge thanks to them. Um, this was like the last big project that I needed to wrap up before we're ready to head south, and that's a good thing. We're ready to go. Um, I will be doing probably a real-life usage power consumption on this, all the solar, all the changes we've made. Once we get down to the Bahamas, we just gotta get there first, and it won't come too soon, because it's getting cold.